What's up, Vien Fam, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to give a long-term review and a proper send-off to my wonderful Rock Atlas 2.0 mech helmet, as well as talk about why it's so important to wear proper gear and uh, to talk about and dispel some myths about Rock and uh, the brand and their helmets. So, with that said, roll the intro. Hi, right, Fiend Fan, thanks for coming back. So again, like I said, I wanna talk about uh, Ruroc, um, what their helmets mean to me from an aesthetic and safety standpoint, and with particular regards to my accident from a couple of weeks ago. Many of you probably already know that I was in an MVA when a cager pulled out in front of me, but uh, in case you didn't know, now you know, I was in an accident a couple weeks ago. Uh, left me with a fractured wrist in two places, uh, which will be uh, surgically repaired on Monday. Uh, I will be getting a plate and two screws, and uh, hopefully the, uh, the real healing process will start. My season is pretty much over at this point, so my plan at this point going forward is just to heal up uh, and start drooling over bikes, uh, thinking about how things will go uh, in March or early April. Uh, when the snow finally does dissipate here in wonderful western New York. So, um, for a lot of people, it's easy to see why I was drawn to Rurock. Their designs are second to none. Uh, they are just so on point. Uh, they're instantly recognizable from the overall design and, and shape of the helmets to the individual graphics that they come up with. And whether you go for something really involved like this mech that's got everywhere you look there's something else that you're seeing there or if you just went with a, a regular carbon or a liquid carbon uh, you know there's there's all kinds of different designs to choose from pretty much uh if you have a bike uh they will have a helmet that will match it in some way shape or form so um if you've watched any of my other videos, like five things that I wish all new riders knew, or five more things I wish all new riders knew, or you follow me on any other social media platform, be it Instagram, Facebook, or here, uh, YouTube, you know that I'm no stranger to full gear. Um, pretty much I was a 99.99% uh, at gap person. There was one weekend that, uh, right after I got my, my lower address, as a matter of fact, that uh, I went out for a long ride with my friend and it was oppressively hot that day. It was like 90, 95 degrees out with uh, super high humidity and uh, I chose to wear a sleeveless t-shirt. Um, not one of my finest moments. Uh, luckily, I, I got home with no issues as far as uh, accident or road rash or anything like that, but um, first of all, I came home with a pretty bad sunburn uh, I sunburn really easily at first and then it turns to tan. That's my Native American heritage in me. But uh, I look back now and think, I mean, I had had the bike for a couple of days and I put like four or 500 miles on it that, that Saturday. And, um, you know, I was wearing jeans. Uh, granted, I, I had riding boots on. I had my Harley riding boots on and I had my gloves on and I had uh, my Scorpion EXO helmet that I was wearing, but things could have been, could have gone horribly, horribly wrong. Thankfully they did not, but they could have. Um, shortly after I bought that, that uh, EXO helmet or the Scorpion helmet, uh, I had it for like maybe a week or two. Um, and then I uh, bought the Ruroc and uh, I cannot have enough good things to say about it. Um, it's not a perfect helmet. If you watch my, uh, my earlier review of the helmet, um, not the unboxing, but the, the one after that, the, the other uh, review of it, um, there is no such thing as a perfect helmet. There's too many head shapes, too many uh, contours in people's heads, too many this, too many that. There, there is no perfect helmet or else there would be only one company making them and that would be that because there would be no need for any other competitors. You would just have one helmet that covered everybody. That's just not the case. Not to mention the fact that some people like modular, some people like full face, some people like uh, three quarters, some people like uh, half helmets, um, some people don't like to wear a helmet at all. But uh, I'm here to, uh, again, I 
fully understand and respect everyone's right to choose um, as long as it's legal in, in your in your state or your province or your locality wherever you are um, if it's legal to go without a helmet um, I, I totally respect that but at the same time I implore you to think about the what-ifs now I, I've heard every argument and I agree with some of them to a certain extent for people that want to go that route I am NOT one of those people but I, I can understand it most helmet impacts or facial cranial facial impacts happen happen in this area here so if you have a three-quarter helmet or you have a half helmet or you're not wearing a helmet at all uh, and you go down you're gonna have a really bad day uh luckily i was wearing a full face helmet when i crashed um by looking at it you probably wouldn't tell and it's probably gonna be difficult to see in this without zooming in um but I've got some pretty good abrasion in this area right here. And then I can see my, my GoPro mount is bent. And there's some pretty good abrasion right here. Uh, also, shout out to chinmounts.com. Um, they make specific 3D printed mounts for certain helmets. Um, I got this before Rurock started making theirs, but um, this held on. Um, I went over my handlebars, flew 20 feet in the air, tumbled a couple times. Um, the, the mount itself is busted, meaning the, the little plastic piece that you attach the GoPro to, but this chin mount stayed in place. They're very reasonably priced, um, not sponsored, but, uh, I believe in them. They, they stood up for me and, uh, looking forward to, uh, getting my next one, uh, for my, uh, Atlas 3.0 when I, uh, get that in the near future. Anyways, um, so like I said, uh, when my bike hit the vehicle, after they pulled out in front of me, the bike initially stopped. I did not. I was thrown from the bike over my handlebars, uh, clipping and, and ripping off the fairing, I believe, um, with my, my boots as I went over. And then the bike ended up flipping a couple times as, as well too. But I went like 20 feet in the air, put my hands out to initially stop me, um, stop my fall. And when I finally came to uh, a stop on the tarmac, it never dawned on me that my head had actually made any compact or contact with the with the, the tarmac. So um, I know that the brain does weird things and that uh, it uh, can block things out as a as a coping mechanism for the for the the human that's attached to it, but. Uh, again, like I said, I had no idea. I didn't know until like the day after that um, we had gone out to the car, my, uh, my wife and I had gone out to the car to bring the gear inside and we opened up the rear hatch of our vehicle and I saw those scratches. And I'm like, oh wow, my head did hit. And with this right here, I didn't actually even notice this until earlier today that the mount was bent and that I had a, uh, a gash right there on the face. So um, you may be able to say that I can't be objective and I would grant you that to a certain extent, but, and I'm, I'm not gonna necessarily say that this helmet saved my life, but it definitely saved me from serious head trauma, if not worse. So, you know, it, and you could say, well, you know, if you were wearing a, another full face helmet, it, it may have done just the same. And I grant you that is possible. But this is military, military grade carbon fiber. Here, I have that Scorpion EXO that I was talking about. Not a bad helmet, put together, put together well, but it is thermoplastic. Um, it also, once I put my Cardo Pack Top Slim in there, and the uh, accompanying JBL speakers, it pushed on my ears so badly that it folded them up. And uh, by the time, because this, the first ride I rode out with this helmet was on that long ride where I wore the, uh, the sleeveless t-shirt. So by the time I got home that day, I was in a world of pain. Um, my Rurok re uh, arrived uh, in the mail a couple of days later after that, and 
I've never worn anything since. Here's my first helmet, my HJC CL17 that I bought to wear for the MSF course and my first year, uh, year and a half of riding. Great lid uh, for the price, but uh, again, thermal plastic. Um, padding is adequate, but I wouldn't say that it's uh, super plush or anything like that. Same thing with the, uh, the Scorpion. Padding is definitely adequate with the exception of the area with the with the uh, the ear uh, uh, speakers for the ears and all that. But uh, that being said, thermoplastic, thermoplastic, carbon fiber. I put either of these helmets on, it's like putting a bowling ball on my head now. Um, I can't say that I'm never, ever, ever going to consider another brand of helmet again, ever, because I don't believe in absolutes, especially when it comes to gear. But one thing I will tell you is I will never wear another thermoplastic helmet again. And it's carbon fiber or nothing. If it's nothing, that means I'm not riding, obviously. Okay, so, um, like I said, I wanted to talk about the Rurak helmet. Uh, aside from just that, I, I wanted to cover the um, the basics with the accident and how it held up and how extremely thankful and blessed and grateful I am to Rurak for making such a phenomenal product. Uh, but I want to talk about the other stuff too. Um, there doesn't seem to really be a middle ground with Rurak. Um, people either love them or they hate them. There really isn't a, well, they're kind of okay. And I think there's a problem here from a standpoint of, and, and don't get me wrong, I think everybody should definitely have their own thing and try to think, don't buy something just because everybody else and their cousin is getting it. Uh, I will freely admit that the two reasons that brought me to Rurock were the Fidlock, uh, again, arthritis, everybody knows. <laughs> uh, Fidlock's a lot easier for me to do than, than D-rings. And um, let's face it, the designs are kick-ass. Uh, that was all I needed to try it out. Since then, um, I have had nothing but a phenomenal experience with them. Again, I can't say that there aren't other great helmets out there, because there, obviously there are. There, the companies wouldn't exist if they didn't. But um, I see and hear a lot of things online, um, more specifically later in the video on that. But uh, I think a lot of people either haven't experienced it themselves or are going by hearsay and or are going by hearsay. Uh, I'll be the first to admit, this helmet flows a ton of air. I said as much in my last video on this. It flows a ton of air. As somebody who is constantly warm year round, even if it's, you know, 30 degrees Fahrenheit or just above freezing here in, in, in the Northeast, um, I wanna be cool. You know, I would rather have a helmet that flowed too much air and have to put on a baklava or, or I'm sorry, balaclava or something else, you know, a, a neck gaiter or something to, to stay warm than to not have enough air flowing. And again, there are other ways around it. There's ways to mitigate that. Obviously being a, a motor vlogger, I keep the front vent closed always, whether I'm motor vlogging or not. These side vents here, they're, they're cosmetic. These three vents are always open. You don't have a way to close them. They do sell plugs, but that's completely up to you. I mean, I think this is also a case of people not doing their due diligence um, when shopping for a product. I'll be the first to admit, Brew Rocks are not cheap, but again, they line up direct, great directly with other competitors of other carbon fiber helmets. Tell me, show me, show me another quality, not just any old off the shelf stuff. Show me a quality carbon fiber helmet that's um, a lot less than Rurak and uh, we'll have a discussion. I I'd be willing to look at it. Not buy it, but I'd be willing to look at it. That said, I don't believe that's the case because any of the ones I've looked at from HJC to Scorpion to Bell, this, there are, to, to Simpson, they're all in the same part, roundabout price range. So, all things being equal, I'm gonna go with the brand that I know and trust. And again, comes with the awesome designs and the Fidlock.
This helmet is extremely comfortable. Again, flows a ton of air, but it, it I, I have no issues with it. Um, I firmly believe that if you're someone who feels that this helmet is too loud, that means a couple of things. One, you're riding too fast. Two, you're not wearing earplugs or combination some thereof. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love to twist the wrist as much as the next person, but if you have a helmet and you're riding enough to where it's, I don't want to say the word painful, but if you're having, if you're having an issue with your hearing, then you're either riding too fast or you don't have adequate rim, rim protection or most likely you're not wearing earplugs. And let me tell you, as somebody who's been there, done that, and got the, the issues to prove it, wear your earplugs, people. Uh, I have really weird ear canals. I did not wear earplugs when I was in the military, and uh, I've been paying for it ever since. Tinnitus is a bitch. Uh, it's just an all-around great helmet. I mean, it's just well put together. Um... You know, the, the changing of the uh, visor is extremely easy, even more so on the 3.0 because you don't have the, uh, the little plastic pieces here anymore. They just attach directly to the helmet. Um, the shockwave is plug and play, just drops right in. Uh, even Again, even easier on the 3.0 because it's magnetic, whereas on the 2.0 you have to put in, I think, two screws. Big deal. But, uh, you know, anything to make it easier, even better. Um, so needless to say, uh, oh, another thing, you buy a Ruck, um, they're going to they're gonna offer you a $25 uh, replacement program. Go ahead and do it. When I, I, I purchased this helmet, I bought the $25 replacement program, which allows you to send in your helmet and get a new one of your choice at half cost. And the great thing about it is you get two years after the date of your accident. So, you know, I was worried about time frame because, as I've said before, my season's done. It's, uh, it's early July. You know, I'm not going to ride again until probably late March to early April. Um, I contacted Rurox Customer Service. Two years. I have two years from the date of my, my accident to, to turn this in before I get another one. Um... I'm certainly not going to wait that long. Um, I'm probably going to order one here in the very near future. Uh, just kind of wait to see how things all fall down um, with the surgery and healing and all that good stuff. Which, you know, you can't blame me for that, I would think. So, uh, I cannot recommend Ruach enough. Again, as with everything else, whether it's a motorcycle, a helmet, a candy bar, whatever, do your homework. So, 300 subs. Actually, I'm almost to, almost to 350 right now, actually. Uh, inching very close to 350. So, um, thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, I just really cannot believe the incredible love, support, and just everything that you all have shown. My, not only myself, but Mrs. Fiend, Moto Pink Sensei. It's just, it's been overwhelming. And, uh, you know... From day one, I've always said that I do this for fun and I do this to give back. Um, so that being said, 300 subs, uh, you know what time it is. It is uh, the, the Butt Buffer uh, Motorcycle Seat Cushion Giveaway. So uh, I actually have not done the, uh, the, the random drawing yet. I will be doing that uh, right now. So I will post up on the screen uh, who the winner is. I will be in contact with you. Uh, here shortly to find out which uh, seat cover you want and uh, we'll go from there. So again, as always, please people, stay shiny side up. Cages are crazy out there this year, more so than usual. Throttle fiend out.